Nintendo's lawsuit against the Yuzu Switch emulator is mm, trying it on a little bit. In case you are brand new to the internet, Nintendo has developed something of a reputation for being very aggressive in the protection of their intellectual property, especially when it comes to using the legal system. Nintendo going after Yuzu is understandable, because while emulation is not absolutely definitely 100% illegal in all circumstances, the main use for an emulator like this is piracy, and that is something that Nintendo absolutely does not want to encourage. There's a lot riding on this lawsuit. It seems that it's Nintendo's intention here to establish a legal precedent that would shut down all forms of emulation, whether or not used for a legal purpose. It is interesting then to read the specific words used by Nintendo's lawyers in this lawsuit, and the specific way in which they're attempting to frame Yuzu as a player within a larger industry. A lot of what Nintendo has to say here hangs on the word unlawful, which is a fun word in a legal context. That word, I do not think it means what you think it means. Right, oh, let's have a look at the lawsuit itself. Nintendo of America v Tropic Haze LLC. I'm just going to read verbatim because I want to communicate this in Nintendo's own words. Quote, Defendant Tropic Haze LLC is an entity that owns, develops, and operates Yuzu, a video game emulator for Nintendo Switch games. A video game emulator is a piece of software that allows users to unlawfully play pirated video games that were published only for a specific console on a general purpose computing device. Now that's a very loaded definition of an emulator. By the way, throughout this video you are going to be seeing some footage of games played on an emulator. The games in question are homebrew games, so have absolutely nothing to do with Nintendo and in no way infringe any of Nintendo's copyrights or trademarks. And that being the case, these are an excellent example of a circumstance where an emulator can be used to do something that is absolutely not a form of piracy. I say that because looking at the way that Nintendo has described an emulator in this legal document, it makes it sound as if an emulator's only purpose is piracy, and that an emulator itself is against the law. And on both cases, that is incorrect. Emulation in general is tricky, legally. There's not a huge body of precedent established one way or the other, and indeed, in this lawsuit, Nintendo has very specifically worded things so that we're avoiding, for the most part, the discussion of whether or not emulation is actually legal. In the phrasing here, Nintendo is attempting to portray an emulator as a piece of software that exists purely to pirate games, ignoring all of the other potential uses for an emulator that are perfectly within the law. For example, an emulator can be used for preservation, an emulator can be used for education, and an emulator can be used for more wide general fair use purposes. Now, Nintendo is not wrong in saying that an emulator can be used for piracy, uh, and indeed, let's be fair here, that's the main use for an emulator like Yuzu. It's just that for something to be potentially used illegally it doesn't necessarily mean that the thing itself is also illegal. Further quote, Yuzu allows Nintendo Switch games, which Nintendo authorizes for play solely on Nintendo Switch consoles, to be played on Windows, Linux, or Android systems. That means that people are able to play pirated Nintendo Switch games on PCs and Android devices, which would not otherwise be possible due to the protections that Nintendo has put into place on its consoles and games. That thing about protection is the real linchpin of Nintendo's lawsuit here. Because as established, emulators are not necessarily illegal. But copy protections are legally binding because copyright law is an absolute mess. The last time that US copyright law got a really big juicy update was in 1998, which means that it is at this point pushing 30 years old. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act covers a lot of stuff and really is not fit for purpose in the modern era because things have changed so much and so dramatically since it was written. It was essentially, right off the bat, a reaction to the fact that the internet was dramatically changing the way that copyright worked. Because for centuries, copyright existed as a thing that really only mattered if you had access to a printing press or large broadcasting technology. And then suddenly, anybody could make a copy of anything and distribute it online. The rules all completely changed. And the Digital Millennium Copyright Act is something of a response to that. It was designed to try and patch up some holes in a copyright system that was not fit for purpose 
surface even at that point. In the years since, there have been several attempts to fix and amend the DMCA, and make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly, to clarify some of the issues within it that can be exploited by large companies with access to large legal teams, for example Nintendo. One of the key problems with the DMCA is 17 US Code 1201, Circumvention of Copyright Protection Systems. The DMCA has all kinds of rules around fair use, and where it would be appropriate to be able to make a copy of something like, say, a video game, for example, for preservation, which is a big issue with Nintendo games in general, but also for things like education. <laughs> Unfortunately, this particular passage in the DMCA states, quote, no person shall circumvent a technological measure that effectively controls access to a work protected under this title. If you have something which is copy protected, which you could otherwise make a copy of for fair use purposes, but there is copy protection in place, then breaking that copy protection is against the law, even if it is legal to make the copy itself. I studied media law at university, and at the time, the big issue that people were complaining about was around DVD burning, because DVD burning involved circumventing copy protection. So while it was completely legal and indeed absolutely essential in some circumstances, in academia in particular, to make a copy of a DVD, for example, say if you wanted to take a chunk out of the DVD uh, and put it as part of a presentation, all the kinds of video essays that you see all over YouTube, absolutely legal, that's fine. But because the copy protection prevented the copying of the DVD, it meant that doing so was breaking the law. As someone I remember, and I can't remember if this came from an academic source or if this was simply one of my lecturers speaking, but somebody likened it to wire cutters uh, and the idea of having freedom to write to roam across the countryside, but then if somebody who owns a field doesn't want you to use your legal right to wander through that field as a rambler, they can put up a fence and make wire cutters illegal. So technically you're allowed on the field, but you can't access the field because you're not allowed to cut the wire. This is the circumstance with emulators in general, and this is the way that Nintendo has framed their lawsuit here. The issue is not the emulation, the issue is circumventing Nintendo's copy protection. Now, it's important that Nintendo has used the word unlawful, as I have said, which is not quite the same as illegal. I mean, okay, colloquially, unlawful and illegal are the same, and so if you look in the dictionary definition, you will potentially see that one of the descriptions of unlawful is illegal. But there is a difference in a legal setting going back over a hundred years. Here is the definition of illegal and unlawful according to constitutional expert James O'Brien. Quote, illegal means that it is forbidden by a law that has been passed. Unlawful means that it is not authorised by law because no such law has been passed. As said, this has a long legal precedent. Here is a description from the 1910 edition of Black's Law Dictionary, which reads, Unlawful and illegal are frequently used as synonymous terms, but in the proper sense of the word, unlawful as applied to promises, agreements, considerations and the like denotes that they are ineffectual in law because they involve acts which, although not illegal, i.e. positively forbidden, are disapproved of by the law, and are therefore not recognised as the ground of legal rights, either because they are immoral or because they are against public policy. Now obviously I'm not saying that a 1910 legal dictionary dictionary holds up in court today, I'm simply saying that there has been a long precedent for the word unlawful not just meaning the same as illegal, but also being used to mean things that are shaky, not quite clear, things that are ill-defined within a legal setting. A lot of Nintendo's lawsuit against Yuzu rides on this unlawful definition where things are not clear yet because there's not a huge amount of legal precedent for a company the size of Nintendo attempting to take out what are often bedroom coders working in their spare time to make something fun for a community like this. Here are some more uses of that word within this lawsuit. Quote, Yuzu unlawfully circumvents the technological measures on Nintendo Switch games and allows for the play of encrypted Nintendo Switch games on devices other than a Nintendo Switch. Users obtain the prod keys either through unlawful websites or by unlawfully hacking a Nintendo Switch console. 
Yuzu's website provides instructions for its users telling them how to unlawfully hack their own Nintendo Switch and how to make unauthorized copies of Nintendo games and unlawfully obtain prod keys. With Yuzu in hand, nothing stops a user from obtaining and playing unlawful copies of virtually any game made for the Nintendo Switch, all without paying a dime to Nintendo or to any of the hundreds of other game developers and publishers making and selling games for the Nintendo Switch. In effect, Yuzu turns general computing devices into tools for massive intellectual property infringement of Nintendo and others copyrighted works. Mm. I don't know about this. So much of this lawsuit hangs on the potential for Yuzu to be used for unlawful purposes. Not necessarily that Yuzu is absolutely breaking the law itself. It's kind of the wire cutter scenario all over again. This is something which has many uses, but because it's got one potential bad use, and even that use is not necessarily locked down, set in stone illegal in many circumstances, but because it's got that one use, Nintendo is saying that it should not be allowed under any circumstances. And as said, there's a lot riding on this lawsuit, because if Nintendo can win this, and I'm almost certain that they can, because otherwise they would not bring this to court, then it sets the precedent that effectively no emulators can work if they are in any way circumventing Nintendo or anyone else's copyright protection. This is very much a case of Nintendo attempting to use a loophole within the DMCA in order to push for a blanket ban on emulation in general, even in circumstances where it would be absolutely legal. And that's not great. Indeed, it falls under one of the other uses for the word unlawful. According to Vocabulary.com, unlawful can be defined as, quote, not conforming to legality, moral law, or social convention, and can also be defined as not morally right or permissible. And in that case, I would say that deliberately using a legal loophole in order to shut down someone simply because you don't like one potential use of their product is unlawful. But that's just my opinion. I'm almost certainly in the minority here. So the moral of the story, if you are a big enough company, the law will bend around your needs.